Tonight, the subject today is anointing to conquer your battles. And the text of the day is in the book of 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel, chapter 5, verse 17 to 25. 2 Samuel, chapter 5, verse 17 to 25. That is our key text. Effie, I'm speaking about anointing to conquer your battles. Now we'll read through this text verse as we continue. Let's start verse 17. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. But David heard about it and went down to the strongholds. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. And I thank you for all who can hear now and afterwards. Yes, and I pray this word will flow with an anointing. Yes. And let there be impartation yes. to whoever hears this word. Let there be deliverance. Yes. Let there be an awakening. Yes. Let there be revival. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are talking about anointing to conquer your battles. This is the time when David had been anointed. Remember, David was anointed several times, at least three times. Every time he got a, a position, he was anointed. That is the first revelation. Every level of promotion requires an anointing equivalent to that level. Every time God promotes you, every time God raises you, you need an anointing equivalent to that level. That is very important. And this anointing gives you what you require for the promotion. It gives you wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and divine supply. So David was anointed now this time to become the king of Israel. And when he was anointed, his, the historical enemies of Israel were the Philistines. They noted. So before many more other people noted, the people who were close to David noted, but also the immediate people to note were his enemies. And that is a spiritual the scripture is 2 Samuel 5, 17 to 25. That is a very, very important spiritual truth. Your enemy can no more think of the spirit about you. Sometimes even more the, than the place who are, the people who are close to you. As a member of a church, if you're not, if you don't walk spiritual, spiritually close to your pastor or your preacher for that matter, if you're not aligned in the spirit, the enemy can be knowing more secrets about the spiritual dimension of your pastor than you do. And that is a challenge to the Christians. The enemy should not know that David is anointed, while the people who are with him may not be knowing that. The enemy should not be recognizing what God has done to the preacher or to your, to your pastor while you don't recognize it is very important. It's a challenge from the camp of the enemy that the enemy could first recognize the anointing of David, even sometimes before his people. So that should be the challenge that we should take. Now, there are several things I want us to look through this story and they shall give us insight on spiritual warfare. When I talk about anointing, I'm speaking about supernatural empowerment, supernatural empowerment of the spirit. In the battle, how does the Holy Spirit work? Where does what's the place of the Holy Spirit? How do you engage the Holy Spirit in the battle? We are already in a global battle of COVID-19, and also, of course, individual people have their own battles. So this will be a very important lesson, and especially for now, so because it will equip you on spiritual warfare. Now, the first thing the Bible says. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. But David heard about it and went down to the stronghold. So the enemy recognized the anointing on David. And I've, I've given you a challenge. This is a challenge from the camp of the enemy. Sometimes the enemy recognizes what is in your pastor while members don't recognize. Now, when he was anointed, the enemy... Those, uh, those historical enemies of Israel, the Philistines, the arch enemies, the scripture tells us they went up in full force to look for him, of course, to destroy him. 
But I want you to note this. But David heard about it and went down to the stronghold. So number one, number one, when you're in spiritual warfare, and not when you're in spiritual warfare, is a matter of strategy as a Christian, as a spiritual person. Number one, you need a place where you enter when the battle approaches. You need a place where you enter when the battle approaches. So when the Philistines were coming, and David learned they were coming. He went to the strongholds. He went in the armory. And definitely, we can deduce from that, he went to equip himself. Or he went to prepare. Or he went to reacquaint himself. Anyhow, he went to the strongholds. He didn't go straight to the battle. There is a place he knew. A place relevant and important to get into before he faced the Philistines. Jesus, Elijah, and Moses had places they could go before they went for battle. When you read in the accounts of the gospel, most of the times you'll hear the Bible say, and when Jesus came from the mountain, he found a child who was demon-possessed. And when Jesus came from the mountain, he healed the sick so you'll find that the mighty things, exploits of the spirit, fight destroying of the works of the devil that Jesus was doing. He had come from the mountain. The same case with Elijah. He was a man of the mountain. Hannah was a woman of Shiloh. She used to go to Shiloh every year. That's where she was contending in her battle. Battles are won or lost in your sacred place. Battles are won or lost in your sacred place. You need to have a place in your house or elsewhere. This is a place you go and meet with God. You get equipped. It's a sacred place. And this is where Jesus said, when you are praying in the sacred place, you close yourself there. But what you are doing there, he said, it shall be revealed in public. David first entered in the strongholds. To take his armor and his strength. This is the question. Where do you come from when going to war? When you hear there is war, what do you do? Sometimes people have the wrong places. They get into the first thing they do when there is spiritual warfare. Most of the people, mostly sometimes, they call their parents. Some people call their parents. You know, look at the case of maybe a family which has... Uh, look at spouses who have issues and they are fighting or they are, they are those battles in the house. What happens as a spouse? What is the first thing you do when you realize there is battles, there are wars you are doing with your spouse? Wh what is your first place? Where do you go first? You take your phone and you call your parent, you call your mother, you call your father, you call friends. What is, where is the first place you go when there is spiritual warfare? Because when people are getting to war, they get, they, they get to the wrong place. They get to the wrong place first. They start calling their relatives. The wives maybe call their wives. Men call, I mean the wives call the mothers and husbands also call mothers and neighbors and workmates and parents. So where do you go to when there is war? David went into the strongholds to take the full armor and strength. Some others ran to the internet. You know, if they have a problem, I'm giving a, an example of a family. When they have a problem as spouses, they re, there is a battle in the house. You will find most people just run into the internet. They start searching, you know. Somebody starts to search because maybe you're really offended by your spouse. You see him like a devil. And you rush to the internet and you start searching. And of course, in the search engine, maybe you'll go and put a search and say, what do you do if you are married by the Antichrist? Because you perceive this spouse is an Antichrist. So you go and you Google, and definitely the internet will give everything. And uh, maybe you are so mad, and then you Google and you call uh, anything. So where do you run? Where, where is the first point you get into when there is spiritual warfare? You need a sacred place. You need a sacred place. A sacred place is not the place you build when you build the house and you call it prayer house. 
It can only be a sacred place if actually you pray there. Because with most people, it has, most Christians now have powerhouses in the house they've built. But do you pray there? You need to think about it. It can't be a powerhouse if you don't pray there. But it needs to be charged with power. So that when you hear there is an enemy who is coming, that is where you can get. That is where you can get your strength. Before you talk with people, before you talk with your parents, before you call the colleagues at work. You need to get there. And David knew the secret. So where do you come from when you go to the battle? You should come from your secret place. Not from people, not from your workmate, and not from parents. Number two, the Bible says in verse 18, this is very important. Now, I want you to listen clearly. Now, the Philistines had come and spread out in the valley of Rephim. So when the Philistines came to attack David, they spread themselves in the valley called Rephim. Reph, Rephim. You just see it in your Bible. Rephim. This valley. Then I was interested to look at what is Rephim. Then I learned there are two meanings attached to Rephim. There are two meanings. One, giants or sons of giants. And then number two, it means dead. And therefore, if you are going to match those two meanings together, Rephim means a place of dead giants. It's a place of dead giants. So this is where the enemies of David gathered. This is where they came when they wanted to fight David. A place of dead giants. So number two in the spiritual battle, the anointing should teach you this. The enemy can destroy you. I want you to note this. The enemy can destroy you through the memory of dead giants. The enemy can destroy you through the memory of dead giants. That is number two. The enemy can destroy you through the memory of dead giants. Rephim, historically, there used to be giants. That's what history shows all the way from the, the New Testament, the Old Testament in January, I mean in Genesis. There used to be giants. They died. It was called also the valley of death. So they never actually used to exist. Listen to this revelation. It's very important. When these people wanted to destroy David, they knew where to go. Listen now. The enemy can destroy you the, through the memory of dead giants. The enemy can use your memory of dead giants. These are life goriaths that caused terror in your life at some point. These are enemies or goliaths that caused terror in your life at some point. Maybe it was assault. You know, you were assaulted. Maybe it's divorce. Maybe it's some kind of abuse you went through. And that memory entered even to your subconscious. And every time the enemy shows up, it, that enemy triggers that experience. It brings, that enemy brings the memory of what happened. Maybe those of you who have ever experienced, for example, an accident. When you hear a bang, you get shocked because you think it's another accident. Because of what you experienced. Because that memory attached itself somewhere in your subconscious. And every time a scenario shows up, you interpret it from the point of view of that past experience. There are many dead giants that you need to deal with. Remember the giants are already dead, but they are there in memory. And the Philistines knew that psychology. They knew when they go to this kind of a valley, it is going to evoke the images, the shadows of giants, the memories of giants. And their atrocity and their ruthlessness, and how they used to destroy people. And with that kind of a mind, if somebody goes by that, you are bound to lose. Bad past life experiences is something you need to deal with. The bad past life experiences is something you need to deal with. The enemy would like his choice of battlefield. You see that these the Philistines. Are the ones who realize Rephim is the best place to go and fight. And therefore I'm saying 
The enemy would like his choice of battlefield. He would like to make the choice of the battlefield. And that is your weak point. The enemy would like to make the choice of the battlefield. And that place would like to choose is your weak point. And one of the weak points would like to major on is a memory of the past. Past failures. Past atrocities. Past persecutions. How you were let down by somebody. How you were betrayed by a friend. How you were assaulted by a parent. How you were abused by relatives. How you were assaulted by a spouse. What happened at a given time. Those memories are part of the weakness that the devil can use to destroy you in the battle. And this happens to many people. So that when they go to fight, when they are doing battle, the enemy immediately evokes the memory of dead giants. And they see the giant there. They start seeing the giant that abused them, the giant that assaulted them, the giant that stole their property, the giant that stole the money, the giant that killed their mother, the giant that killed their brother, the giant that assaulted them when they were children. And when those memories are evoked, when those Goliaths are revived, you start seeing them in the battlefields. You are bound to lose in the battle. Your weak point is a strategic battlefront for the enemy. Your weak point is a strategic battlefront for the enemy. Bitterness, anger, sex, money, those weaknesses, those past things which happened in your life, bitterness, something happened to your life, you are so bitter, you are so anger because something happened. So when you go to the battle, that giant appears, bitterness is evoked, anger is evoked. You need to look at that. Let the dead giants die. Let them be buried completely. Don't revive them. Listen to this. Behind the memory of dead giants that appear in the battle is the enemy. Behind the memory of dead giants that appear when you're fighting battle, that behind them is the enemy. That is where the enemy hides behind those memories. You can't win present battles while trapped in the memory of dead giants. I repeat it again. You cannot win present battles while trapped in the memory of dead giants. To win your battles, you need a renewed mind. And that is where anointing comes. You need the anointing of God to renew your mind. You need those dead giants in your mind to be crushed. You need those giants that every time emerge when you are confronting the enemy, when you've pushed the enemy so far, and then he evokes the memory of the dead giants, and then you lose the arms, you lose the battle, you lose the morale, you lose the energy. You need the anointing of the Holy Spirit to crush those dead giants and you forget them completely. So if you're going to make a way forward, if you're going to have a headway in the battlefront, you must allow the anointing of God to flow into your life, to crush the memory. Maybe you've come from a broken family. Maybe you've come from a family where your father was abusive. Maybe he could abuse your mother. Those are memories. Those are dead giants. If you're going to win the battle, you must allow the first assignment for the anointing of the Holy Spirit is to destroy the memory of dead giants. And the of the Lord, I want you to hold your hand, one hand on your head. I want to pray for a renewed mind in the name of Jesus. Just hold your one hand on your head. I take authority in the name of Jesus yes. over those dead giants that always emerge when you are doing spiritual warfare. Those past bad experiences, yes. in the name of Jesus, I rebuke them. Yes. I release an anointing to renew your mind yes. for the glory of God. Yes. I release an anointing to renew your mind in the name of Jesus. Yes. Receive the anointing to renew your mind in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now that is very important revelation. When you go at home, you just need to review and try to spot these kind of giants which are dead, but they've become a hindrance to your life. 
in the name of Jesus. And sometimes if you give room to these dead giants, they will really disturb you. Because sometimes they live and come like nightmares. They can start appearing like nightmares. Those who are married, these could start even uh, appearing like, uh, like spiritual husbands or spiritual wives. So these past giants, you need to deal with them through this anointing. You need to deal with them because they can really put you down. They can make you a casualty in every battle. They can make you a loser in every battle. Receive your victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. The next thing the Bible tells us in verse 20. Remember we've tackled two things we've said. In every battlefield, in every battle, you need a place you enter when the battle approaches. I expect everybody to have a sacred place where you pray. And then number two, the enemy can destroy you through the memory of dead giants. And then number three, you read in verse 20, it says, So David went to Baal Perazim, and there he defeated them. He said, As waters break out, the Lord has broken out against my enemies before me. So that this place was called Baal Perazim. Verse 21. The Philistines abandoned their idols there. I want you to note that. The Philistines abandoned their idols there. And David and his men burnt them. This is another thing you need to know. This is very spiritual. When the, the Philistines came to fight David, they knew that battle is spiritual. They knew battles are spiritual. They were heathen people. But they knew the revelation. They had they knew spiritual dynamics. They had revelation from the enemy. They knew battles are spiritual. So what happened? The scripture shows us they carried their idols in the battleground. They used to carry with them their idols in the battleground. So when they were fighting, the idols were there. That's why when David overcame them, one of the things David did is to take those gods and burn them. So number three, when you are doing spiritual warfare, you need to discern the powers behind your battles. You need to discern the powers behind your battles. I have said because battles are spiritual. Battles are spiritual. Besides the physical men of Philistine that David was saying, there were idols, there were gods, there were demons, there were powers of evil, there were prosperities, there were demoniac forces. And these people had carried them in the battle. Previously, they had used them and won. Now, listen to this revelation. Listen to this revelation. Your enemy, your enemy cannot come in the battle. Your enemy cannot come, your enemies cannot come in the battle with their gods. And you expect to win without your God. Your enemies cannot come in the battle with their gods. And you expect to win without your God. That is a very important revelation. Going back to what we said, the sacred place. What you get into the sacred place is to engage God. Battles are won while you are with God. What determines the success or the failure of battle, spiritual warfare, is whether you have God. And these Philistines, because the people they were fighting with, David knew. That is why when the battle was continuing, he targeted at their gods. He targeted to bring down those powers. He targeted to burn those idols. He targeted to destroy. And once that happened, the enemy fled. Because they got the power to fight from these demoniac powers. And therefore, for you to win in spiritual warfare, you also to tap the power of the Holy Spirit. 
You need the power of God. You need the anointing. You need the anointing. You cannot go to fight witchcraft at your workplace. You're fighting witchcraft for, for a disease with people who are already having the powers of their gods, sacrificing to their gods, offering sacrifices to their god, giving money to their gods, even sacrificing their children to their god. And then you expect to win in that contest without your god. That's what I call high deception frequency. That kind of a battle is where I say you are operating in a high deception frequency and you are risking. That is why anointing is very important. If you've listened to my sermons, there is this word I always mention to the sun. And this is becoming very more important now, even in the last days, because of many wicked forces of darkness are all over. Discernment is very important. Discernment is very important. So when you're doing spiritual warfare, you need discernment. David discerned and discerned that these people have this God's A, B, C, D. And he targeted them to burn them. Because he knew when he destroyed them, these people are finished. You don't wrestle against flesh and blood. You don't fight people. You need to discern the powers operating behind them. You need to discern the operatives behind them. You need to discern the spirit which is operating behind these people. And then deal with that spirit. So you need to discern the powers behind your battles. Receive the spirit of discernment. If you can hear me, just say a big amen there. Amen. Receive the spirit of discernment. Lift up your hand wherever you are and tell God, I pray, I want discernment. I want to discern, I want to discern. Discernment is very important. Just pray to God and tell God, Lord, I pray for the spirit of discernment. In the name of Jesus, you need discernment. You can't win spiritual warfare if you don't discern. You can't win spiritual warfare. Thank you, Jesus. Receive the spirit of discernment. Now, we are talking about, let me further go about discernment. So you need to discern the powers behind your battle. I have seen people lose jobs. I have seen people close shops. I have seen people who have been sick in the house, just attending the sickness medically, and they lose the battle. Because they, did, they didn't discern what is the spirit and the power behind this disease. Some people were in the house. They are fighting every time in the house. They think it's a problem with the spouse. You need to discern the powers behind those battles. You need a revelation. To discern, last time I said, is to see in the spirit. It is to know in the spirit. The spirit world is more real than the physical. So before you get into technical and mechanical and physical and scientific approaches to issues, you need to seek the Lord for the spirit of discernment in every case so that you can know. And when you overcome a case spiritually, that game is over. In Jesus' name, may you receive discernment. Let me go further and speak about discernment. So three, we've talked about three things now. Now, verse 24. As soon as you hear, now it is God guiding David how to go about this war. He told him, as soon as you hear the sound of marching in the top of the poplar trees, move quickly. Because that will mean the Lord has gone out in front of you to strike the Philistine army. It is very important in battle. He's told, God is telling him, as we continue in this battle, because he's still continuing with the battle, God is telling him something very important. He's telling him, as soon as you hear the sound of marching, as soon as you hear the sound, number four, you need to discern voices. You need to discern voices. You need to discern voices in the battle. In spiritual warfare, you need to discern voices. Why do you need to discern voices? Now, it is God telling him, David, as soon as you hear the sound of marching, because summary, in summary of this verse, what, how God fought this battle, is that God told David, when you go to fight, you'll hear sounds 
on the poplar tree. So he told him, when you hear that sound of the poplar tree, know that the Lord, it's the Lord who is going ahead of you. Now, if you contextualize that in the Bible version and knowing who God is, when it comes to war, he's called Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. It tells you those were angels who were walking, who were moving there. These are our voices of angels. So they are moving there and they are sweeping the enemies. They are slaying the, the, Amale, the Philistines. They are destroying them. So God is telling David, for you to get to that victory, you must hear the sound. I'm talking about discern the voices. Why should you discern? Verse 17 of the same chapter where we read, when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. But David heard about it. So in all the cases, one of the weapons David is having is a power to hear. It is supernatural hearing to discern voices. One of these days we look into the subject of voices. But let me tell you something. If you don't discern voices, many people have become casualties in war because they don't discern voices. The enemy can speak through your mind. The enemy can speak through your spouse if he's not spiritual. The enemy can speak through your neighbor. The enemy can speak through any, any, any living thing. Even to some extent in the Garden of Eden, he used an animal. Voices are of consequence. Voices are significant. You therefore need to discern what you hear. People have lost their families because of what they had. They thought this was a voice from a friend, but the source of the voice was the devil. They thought this was a voice of the doctor, but the voice was of the enemy. They thought this was a voice of my colleague, but this voice was from the enemy. So God had trained David. That anointing David had received. He could discern powers behind the battles. He could also discern voices. That is why anointing is very important. Because you walk in these things, you walk in the power to discern the powers behind battles, you walk in the ability to discern voices if you're walking in the anointing of God. Receive that anointing in the name of Jesus. Amen. So it is good to discern. Now listen to this. If your frequency can only receive the voice of the enemy, you are done. If your frequency can only receive the voice of the enemy, you are done. I repeat the third time. If your frequency can only receive the voice of the enemy, you are done. If every time you are saying what the devil has done, if every time you are hearing how you are going to lose, if every time you are hearing how you are hated, if every time you are hearing how you will die, if every time you are hearing how there is no future, if every time you are hearing my spouse is the worst, if every time you are hearing you will die soon, if every time you are hearing you are poor, if every time, if that is the voice, if your frequency can only receive from the voice of the enemy, you are done. You therefore need to discern the voices you are hearing. You need to hear the voice of God. You need to hear the voice of victory. You need to hear the voice of healing. You need to hear the voice of prosperity. And that is why the devil is mad sometimes when we speak about prosperity. Because the devil would like us to confirm his voices by telling people they are poor and they are miserable. And once we hear his voice and tell the people so, it is done. And then, and that is why Jesus told people in Mark chapter 4 verse 24, he told them, take heed what you hear. That is what Jesus told people. Take heed what you hear. Mark 4 24, take heed what you hear. Because what you hear is significant. What you hear is spiritual. What you hear has a spiritual dimension. And more so in spiritual warfare. Receive the discerning of voices. You need to discern the voice. Lastly, number five, the fifth thing you need to discern in verse 25, it says, So David 
as the Lord commanded him, he struck down the Philistines all the way from Gibeon to Gezal. David struck the Philistines. He pushed them until it was over. Number five, discern the end of the battle. You need to discern the end of the battle. That is why I call it anointing for battle. Because this language can only appeal when you are anointed. When you are walking in the spirit. You need to discern the end of the battle. Very important. Why should you discern the end of the battle? So that you don't end the battle prematurely. That is number one. So that you don't end the battle prematurely. The that is number one, or you keep fighting finished battles. Those are the two problems you can get into, ending the battle prematurely, or keeping fighting finished battles. You need spiritual discernment. You need to discern the end of the battle. Some of the battles occupying your energy right now ended long time ago. Some of the battles occupying your energy right now ended long time ago, but you're still fighting them. You're wasting your energy. You need discernment because wars are not won because you cannot see the enemy. Wars are not won because you cannot see the enemy. Because the, the enemy could have retreated what is called Tactical withdrawal. Tactical withdrawal is where uh, the military withdraws so that they can consolidate again their resources. They can consolidate their resources again. So the fact that you don't see that man fighting in the office the following day is not enough. You need discernment. The fact that you can see the child is obedient the following morning after you reprimand her in the evening, you need discernment to actually know whether in the spirit, whether it's over. Because the enemy can retreat. The enemy can have a tactical withdrawal to regather resources, to re-energize himself, to re-strategize. But when you have the spirit that discerns the end of war, you can now feel in the spirit that the battle is over. Push the battle. Until you hear in your spirit, mission accomplished. Push the battle until you hear in your spirit, mission accomplished. Push the battle until you hear in your spirit, it's over. That is very important. Until you feel it is over. And once you feel like that, seal it because it is over. So you need to discern when the battle has ended so that you don't keep fighting battles which were a long time ago finished or you don't end a battle prematurely. You need to discern. And let me tell you something. Most of the battles you've been fighting long are a long time gone. They are finished. You just need to declare in the name of Jesus. Some could take longer. If you read the story of David, the Bible tells us there was a time he had long wars. There are wars that take longer. Don't despair. Receive an anointing. Even when Jesus was in Gethsemane, the battle was long until he had a backup from heaven of an angel who energized him. When the battle is longer, there is a way to be re-energized, to receive an anointing. And those of you engaged in long battle, receive an anointing now. Receive a refreshment. Receive new power. Receive an angelic backup in the name of Jesus. Receive new strength. Receive new strength in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. Amen. We give you glory. Amen. As we finish, what is discernment? Discernment, 1 Peter 5, 8. New American Standard Bible says, 1 Peter 5, 8, what is discernment? It says, be, so, be of sober spirit, be on alert. That's simply discernment. 
Be of sober spirit. Be sober. Avoid drunkenness. And let your soul come to a moment of rest. You can be able to the sun. Let your soul come. Give your soul a moment of rest. Be sober. Be sober in the spirit. When you're sober in the spirit, you're a candidate of discernment. But if there are a lot of you are intoxicated by drunkenness and worries of life and fears, anxiety, and all that, it's hard to discern. So you need to be sober in the spirit. You need to be alert, to be vigilant. It means to be awake and to keep awake. To be vigilant means to be awake and keep awake. If you want to discern, you must in your spirit be awake and keep awake. You will be very sharp in discernment. You'll never lose in any battle. I want to decree in the name of Jesus to all those who can hear me, you'll never be a casualty. In the name of Jesus, receive the spirit of discernment. And those who are in spiritual warfare receive the strength. And to those who have had long battles, I decree them to come to an end. I command them to stop in the name of Jesus. Amen. To those giants who have always emerged during your war, I command them in the name of Jesus to die a natural death. Never to appear again for the glory of God. Amen. Lord, we give you praise and worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Please just write a big amen there to see that you've heard this word. Write a big amen there. As so we end, I want to give you two assignments. Assignment number one. Please share this sermon with at least two people. Share with them. Assignment number two. Next Friday at 5 a.m. Wake up for prayer. That is how you keep awake. Wake up for prayer. Meanwhile, on Tuesday at 8 p.m., we are running our series on end times. Please plan to be there. Our series on end times. Please plan to be there. I invite you to give. Giving is spiritual. It is only spiritual people who can do that. Because when you look at your pocket... You look at your environment, you look at the bank, you may never do it. That applies to all the things of God. If you would ever do anything of God, it is by faith. It is by faith. We obey the word of God by faith, not by what we see. Exercise that faith today by giving. Give your tithe. This is now the second month. We are getting to the third month. Be faithful, give your tithe, give your offering, give other givings. Until we meet then, the Lord keep you, the Lord bless you, and shalom. Bye-bye. In Jesus' name.